now call to order the November 2nd, 2017 meeting of the City of Nashville Planning Board. Uh, Mr. Secretary, can we have the roll call, please? Yes. Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Present. Adam Varley. Here. Scott LeClaire. Ed Weber. Here. Sean McGinnis. Alderman Thomas Lopez. Steve Ducrane. Dan Kelly. Here. David Robbins. <coughs> Jerry Rapucci. Here. <coughs> Maggie Hopper. Here. And welcome to Maggie. Thank you. First meeting. And, and given that um, we have some regular members absent, she will be participating and voting this evening. Uh, next up, we have approval of the minutes from the October 19th meeting. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? Ms. Kelly? I'd like them to um, accept them and put them in file. Uh, motion by Mr. Kelly to accept the minutes and place them in file. Second. Seconded by Mr. Rapucci. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Abstention. And the minutes are approved. Communications. Good evening, Linda. Good evening. Uh, in your folder this evening, you will find uh, two things. Um, first is an email regarding case number five, the Flatley project. They have asked to be um, postponed to the November 16th meeting. And the other thing that you have is the uh, 2018 meeting and deadline dates. That's it. Great. Thank you. Report of community liaison. Kelly, Mr. Weber, anything to report? No, I report. No, I don't. Great. Okay, I will now read the procedure for this evening's meeting. After the legal notice of each conditional special use permit, site plan or subdivision plan is read by the chair, the board will determine if the application is complete and ready for the board to take jurisdiction. The public hearing will begin, at which time the applicant or representative will be given the time to present an overview and description of their project. They shall speak to whether or not they agree with the recommended staff stipulations. The board will then have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant or staff. The chair will then ask for testimony from the audience. First, anyone wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan may speak. Please come forward to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. This will be the time to express your concerns or ask questions you may have regarding the plan. Next, testimony will come from anyone wishing to speak in favor of the plan. The applicant will then be given a rebuttal period, at which time they should respond to any concerns raised by prior public testimony. One public member will be allowed to respond to only those items brought forth during the applicant's rebuttal period. After this has been completed, the public hearing will end and the board will resume the public meeting, at which time the board will deliberate and vote on the application before us. We ask that both sides keep their remarks to the subject at hand and do not repeat what has already been said. We want to be fair to everyone and make the best possible decision based on the testimony presented and considering all applicable approval criteria established in the Nashville Revised Ordinances. Thank you for your interest and courteous attention. I ask you to turn off your cell phones at this time, please. Old business conditional special use permits, none. Old business subdivision plans, none. Old business site plans, case number one, table to a date uncertain, butters to be re-notified. New business conditional special use permits, none. New business site plans. 190 Broad Street Realty Company owner, Gusabel 190 Broad LLC applicant. Application acceptance of proposed one year extension for a site plan to construct a two story, 10,388 square foot multi tenant office building and associated site improvements. Property is located at 190 Broad Street, sheet E, lot 744, and this is zone general business. I don't know what word that's in. Um, as to case number two, can I have a motion this application is complete and ready for the board to accept jurisdiction? So moved. Motion by Mr. Weber. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Ms. Harper, welcome aboard. Thank you. My name is Steve Auger. I'm a project manager with Hainer Swanson, and our office is located at 3 Congress Street here in Nashua. I'm here this evening on behalf of Gusabel 190 Broad LLC. We've come before you seeking a third one year extension for a site plan approval for a two story, 10,300 
88 square foot multi-tenant office building located at 190 Broad Street, uh, right off exit six, adjacent to the National Mall. Uh, this plan was originally approved back in 2014. Uh, we received one year extensions again in 2015 and 2016, uh, and we are back again. Um, the curr currently, the site remains dormant. There's no ongoing construction. Uh, the plans, there are no changes to the plan set. The plans I put up on the board and the entire plan set now is what it was originally approved um, three years ago. So we're just seeking one more extension. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. It, you know, given that, as you mentioned, this is the, the third re request for an extension, do you have any sense of sort of the timing going forward, whether this is likely to proceed if, you know, if we were to grant the extension? Yeah, I, I honestly don't. I don't know what, what Mr. Gordon's plans or borough affairs are. We, we, we kind of don't get into those things until we need to know. Okay. Questions from the board? Mr. Peterson? In the paperwork from the planning department one year ago, uh, they had the conditions that were written, and one was failure to secure the required building permit for this site plan within 12 months from the date of approval shall render this site plan approval null and void and a building permit shall not be issued. So um, is, this, is that still an issue at this time? Uh, do you have to have the required building permit in order to continue? No, I, I believe if you, you either have to get the building permit or you can do what we're doing now, ask for a, another site plan extension. Yeah, I mean, I think if, it, if we did nothing, then no. <laughs> so the building <coughs> permit is for when you're actually going to build? Correct. Right. Okay. I think the effect of the extension would be to you know, extend that condition as well. You may have to, because it's carefully worded 12 months from that date. Mr. Kelly? No, like you. I'm concerned that this is just going to go on forever, and I'd like to see some response to when is something going to happen. I, I don't have an answer for you I know you don't, that. but um, you should have come prepared with that answer you knew we were going to ask. It can't go on forever. Mr. Gucci? I have something for our discussion, but I... It's not for the applicant. He's already stated he doesn't have more information than we're asking for. I don't want to put him on the spot. Okay. Um, yes. Is the it's the property currently being marketed? Uh, I, I I don't believe so. I don't think there's a for sale sign. I mean, typically, uh, the the landowner is a client of ours, and typically when he looks to sell properties, he does put for sale signs out there. And in putting the signs out to advertise for the board, I didn't see one. Okay. Other questions? Okay. We're all set for now. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to this plan? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Does staff have anything to add? Staff has nothing to add. Any other questions for the applicant at this he point? doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I would just say we can, if we do end up having further questions for staff, we can always reserve those for the discussion period. So with that, is everyone comfortable with me closing the public hearing? Yes. I don't know that there's much more to gain from it, so. Um, this concludes the public hearing this application. We'll now take our deliberations into the public meeting. The board does reserve the right to recall any party for further clarification. So, Sir Pucci, did you want to? Yeah, I, I kind of, I think that I don't, I don't have a problem with extending this, but I do share what Mr. Kelly was saying that at some point the circumstances surrounding the approval of an, a project evolve for the city, whether traffic gets better, worse or other things happen in that area. So I, I realize that we have the requirement for uh, it, having it come back for a year and that makes sense. No changes for the testimony of the applicant. But it, it seems like we should put a threshold in here somewhere where we say, okay, we'll approve it this year, but next time 
the whole thing is going to have to be looked at again, not for any particular reason except we just want to make sure that circumstances haven't changed surrounding the property, not just the property itself. Mm -hmm. that, so I, I would be inclined to say, give them a year, give them a year's heads up that if this goes again, they need to be prepared to speak in detail if things, uh, if, if the board, and maybe the board won't, maybe the board will look at it and two minutes later say it's fine, just give them another year in 2018. But I think it's fair to tell them now that we probably will intend to do that in a year. That's my, that's my sense of mm -hmm. the way to address that. It's my two I cents agree, I think that that's the proper approach to this because it can't go forever. You've got to have some plan somewhere. If it's financing, say it's financing. If it's um, can't find a, an occupant, and there must be a reason for this to continue. And I think we need to know those things so we can make some value judgments. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, this particular property um, in these particular circumstances, I, I don't know that I'm particularly concerned about the change of circumstance here, but I think the general point is well taken, which is we should be thoughtful about, you know, granting extensions, you know, over multi-year period um, that we are taking into account whether there have been changed circumstances, whether in the, you know, you know the, the area itself or in, you know, the ordinances of the city. Um, so I, I, I think I'd be, be comfortable with approving the extension here, but with the caveat that we're, we're communicating to the applicant, as you said, Jerry, that, um, that if they're, they're going to come back again next year, we're going to expect a more detailed explanation, and um, and we're going to need that before we would, you know, be in a position to grant a further extension. Sounds good. Would you like me to make a motion? <coughs> sure. Yeah, I make a motion uh, that we grant the the extension as requested with the stipulation that the applicant understands that uh, should another request for a, an extension be be made, that the applicant should be thoroughly prepared to speak to every issue that is included in this original application should the planning board uh, seek to know some more information uh, before they make a decision the next time. That's my motion. I'll second that. Great. And just. I just want to clarify that's you're adding that to the existing that's just one stipulation it. one yeah. stipulation to add yes so the motion by mr. Pucci is to approve new business number two uh, finding that does meet the requirements outlined in site plan NRO section 190-146 D um, with the uh, first stipulation reading is written in the staff report and the second as added uh, by mr. Pucci and mr. Kelly are you seconding that motion second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. You're welcome. Have a great evening. New business case number three, GTY MA NH Leasing Inc. owner. Noria Energy Corporation applicant application and acceptance of proposed site plan amendment to NR1833 for a building expansion for dry goods storage. Property is located at 7 Harris Road, Sheet B, Lot 2039. This is owned highway business and located in Ward 6. As to case number three, can I have a motion this application is complete and ready for the board to accept jurisdiction? So moved. Motion by Mr. Kelly. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Peterson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for the record, my name is Jerry Prunier. I'm an attorney with offices at 20 Farrell Square here in Nashua. I'm also here with this evening with Patrick McLaughlin, who is our engineer on this project. Mr. Chairman, may I put a plan on the board? Of course. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> you never know.
true. You just you never know. You never know. You're right. <laughs> Can I borrow your phone? Your microphone. You can. Thank you. And welcome to the planning board. <laughs> These guys are not that bad. <laughs> um, what we have this evening is, I think you're all familiar with the Shell Station at Harris Road. We're proposing to put an 8 by 16 building for storage in this area at the end of the car wash that comes out here. We're adding additional landscaping here and in, in, that, in that particular area. Because we're in the wetland area, the um, staff requested, planning staff requested we go to the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Adjustment. We receive per, uh, both uh, permission from both of those to construct that particular building. Additionally, we were a little bigger than this. We had 8 by 120. We reduced it because of what the state requirements were. So um, I'd like to go longer, but that's all that there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got you up. Well, I'm going to go back to the podium. If okay. you no, I, all right. I, I have a question the for him then. So. And maybe it's up there. But you had a tank that you were going to be putting in there. Is that no longer being a tank? Uh, oh, underground uh, tank. A long time ago, we, we were not putting that in. Okay, that's it. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions for Attorney Premier? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Does staff have anything to add? Staff has nothing to add. Anything else we want to discuss with the applicant before we close the hearing? We have one waiver for the uh, construction, for the architectural of it, and uh, it's such a small building, it will match the other uh, architecture that's in the area. But that waiver. Oh, this is just on a question. slab, right, Mr. Premier? This is just a slab, right? Pardon? It's just a slab. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. A quick question for the applicant. Uh, will the structure take place at the entrance to the car wash or the exit of the car wash? The exit. The exit of the car wash. Anyone else have any questions? This concludes the public hearing on this application. We will now take the, our deliberations into the public meeting. The board does reserve the right to call any party for further clarification. So, it seems pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions or concerns you want to raise? We approved a bigger footprint, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a pretty modest addition here. Happy to take a motion if anyone's inclined. I'll make a motion. Mr. Weber? Um, as soon as I jump my stuff. Um, new business, number three site plan, GTY MA New Hampshire, uh, 7 Harris Road. Um, Finding that the plan meets NRO section 190, 146D, and with one waiver request um, of NRO 190, 172C, which sets building standard, is granted and will not be contrary in spirit and intent of the regulations with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as written. Motion by Mr. Weber is to approve new business number three, finding that the plan does meet the requirements outlined in NRO section 190-146D with a total of seven stipulations. Um, number one, reading is written in the staff report. Number two, being a waiver request, reading is granted, will not be contrary. And three through seven also is written in the staff report. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was pretty straightforward. <laughs> Thank you. New business site plan case number four. Patios Cacos Irrevocable Trust owner application acceptance of proposal to add 2,880 square feet to the existing building for vehicle storage. Property is located at 6 Broad Street, Sheet 62, Lot 99. The property is split zoned local business and urban residence, and this is located in Ward 4. That's the new business case number four. Can I have a motion this application is complete and ready for the board to accept jurisdiction? Move that. Motion, Mr. Rapucci. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Not sure how I did in the pronunciation there, but well, so that's decision. for the record, my name is Richard Maynard, a professional engineer with Maynard Parkhead of Nashua, representing the applicant and property owner, Liakakos Irrevocable Trust. The property of concern is located at 6 Broad Street at the corner of a short, narrow street known as Jones Court. The property is also known as Lot 99, Sheet 62, containing 14,032 square feet. Property is split zone, RB and LB local business, with LB being the majority zone and therefore uh, the criteria with, with the zoning uh, applies. Located on the property is a 43,046 square foot building, which at one time was a lo local landmark known as Haggerty's Market. Do you mean um, 4,300, Mr. Maynard, or is it 43,000? Huh? Is it 43,000 or 4,300? square feet. 4,346. Okay. Uh, until it was known as Haggerty's Market until sometime into the mid to late 1970s. The proposal for the board is to add 22,880 square foot storage garage to the rear of the building where paved parking currently exists. A variance was granted by the ZBA in July for a front yard setback to Jones Court. No other changes to the site are proposed. The property has existed roughly in its present configuration since the 1940-1950 period, time period, and is considered a legal, non-conforming lot of record. There are several variances uh, requested, most of which are due to the legal, non-conforming status of the lot. An architectural waiver is requested for the storage garage, which is proposed to be a typical multi-bay metal building with a pitched roof, which I have a picture of it above there. Waivers for landscape plan, underground utilities, and stormwater easement documents are also requested. We're not changing the drainage. The building is going over an existing paved area. The utilities are already there. The only utility it's going to have is a, is a uh, elect electrical overhead. Uh, there is no drainage structures for which you need uh, the legal document, uh, which is known as an easement to allow the city to inspect. There's nothing, nothing to inspect. Uh, there's no change in the drainage because the, the building will occupy an existing uh, particular paved area. Fire and engineering have, have reviewed the plan and have no comments. Thank you. Mr. Kelly? That's going to be stored in there. Anything flammable, any no, hazardous No, primarily some of his uh, uh, maintenance vehicles uh, and some things associated with the, uh, uh, the store, but um, it's mainly vehicles. Okay. If no anybody's been out there, you see them, they're kind of scattered around. And no hazardous. They have, other, <laughs> they have other properties that they do. Until about 10 or 15 years ago, there were wooden garages back there, which... Uh, you know, they were 40, 50 years old. They, they, they had to be torn down. And now they're coming back. So. Mr. Weber? 
Uh, are you extending um, the pavement now? Are you going to extend it uh, more or just like it is? It stays exactly as it is. Okay. Uh, no changes. Well, so um, runoff from the roof, is it going to go into the... Um, it goes the same place it does today because all it does is roll off the roof onto the existing pavement that's there already. So there's no change in the direction of the runoff, the amount of a runoff, or anything like that. Okay, no increase. They're essentially putting a building in the middle of the paved area. Okay. So he's using this for his, he has a, right now, he has a construction vehicle. He's, he's got a construction vehicle. He's got some kind of backhoe back there. That's what I'm talking about, yeah, the backhoe. He's got a, kind of in, uh, enclosed in a brick. Now he's going to be able to put that. Yes, undercover in, instead of leaving out. Yeah. All winter and stuff like that, yes. Yeah, and he, he'll have other uh, similar vehicles that will be stored in there too? Yeah, well, he has his, they own several properties. They, they, they have their own vehicles that need to have, instead of being left out all through the winter, they want a place to put them. This is very mundane. There's nothing special here. Yeah, it's actually improving. <laughs> it, it's the, get them undercover so they don't look so. Yeah, and it, looks, looks it so, makes the whole area yeah, look better too. It'll improve. For whatever it's worth, it's going to improve that area. Sure. The only people that go back there is the, the one person that lives in the house <laughs> across the end of Jones Court, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. No. It's good improvement. Minor, but yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Ricci? I'm also. I have one, one question. Oh. <coughs> so there will not be any connection to the sewer for this no, building? this is purely a garage. And the only thing we'll have is, is lighting, uh, interior lighting. So we'll have it to an electrical connection. And understanding that you're not in any way changing, you know, the drainage as it exists now, are there any existing drainage features? Nine, zero back there. Uh, this site has existed since the 1940s or 1950s. Uh, and when, when things were built back then, nobody put any drainage in. If you go look at the, many of the projects built in the 40s and 50s, there is no drainage. It just ran off. And not until you hit the 60s and 70s did that become a consideration. And it, it's never affected anything over there. Uh, I used to live in this neighborhood. I grew up in this neighborhood. There's never been any, for whatever reason, never been any adverse impacts in that area. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> Looks like we're all set for now. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I have to ask for the record. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? The staff have anything to add? Nothing to add. And I'm assuming no concerns with any of the waivers requested? No. Okay. Um, anything else from the board members? I have questions. This concludes the public hearing on this application. We will now take our deliberations into the public meeting. The board does reserve the right to recall any party for further clarification. Questions? I think it's an improvement. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't see anything. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Vehicles I mean, spill something. It's, it's contained. I suppose now it just gets the vehicles the inside. And yeah. Yeah, and it yeah. takes it the vehicle that's outside that everybody sees. And it's there now. It's nice and neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want me to do it? <laughs> sure. Okay. I'll screw it up and then you can fix it. Um, so the, for the proposed 2,880 square foot garage addition, uh, of the building over an existing building over an existing paved area at 6 Broad Street. It's an LB zone and urban, it's, it's both an LB in and RB zone, commercially and residential. The, where's the first, is it start over here? Yeah. It's just okay. Um, 
planning board makes a determination that the plan does meet the requirements outlined in site plan NRO 191-46D um, and the fall in this motion recommends approval with the following stipulations. Uh, the request for a waiver 19172A through E, which requires certain standards to show variations of roof lines, uh, is is granted. Uh, the finding is that it will not be contrary to the spirit of the and an int and intent of the regulation. Uh, board finds uh, in number two, uh, a landscaping plan would not be required, and that waiver is also granted. All waivers are granted. Can I leave it at that, or do I have to spell them out? No, you can. You can just do it in summary form. Just okay. say two is granted. Yeah. Yep, two through uh, all. All waivers, all requested waivers are granted, and I make the motion that uh, we approve the application. Motion by Mr. Rapucci is to approve new business number four, finding that it does meet the requirements outlined in site plan NRO section 190-146D. With a total of seven stipulations, the first four all being waiver request, all reading is granted, will not be contrary, and five, six, and seven as written in the staff report. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Kelly. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. New business site plans case number five. Um, John Jose Flatley, company owner, uh, site plan to develop a portion of the property in, into 28 townhouses. Thus, this case has been postponed to the November 16th meeting. Yes. Um, New business site plans case number six. Also, John J. Flatley, company owner. This case has been postponed to the December 7th meeting. Just a question. Sure. Um, do we have to, where, where these things are notified to abutters, right? Do we have to make a motion as a board? Good night. To, good night. Uh, to continue it? Do we have to, in, in other words, the, we know it's going to be continued, the applicant requested it, it was presented to us, but procedurally, do we have to f actually continue it? Well, we haven't accepted the case, so we wouldn't continue it. Um, it's just we're essentially accepting the postponement. In terms of the notice question, though, I, at what point would you re-notify about ours? Well, on something like the um, flatly R&D one, because it's been postponed so many times right we're going to re-advertise that one if it does come to planning board with this one they're asking to be postponed to a date certain um, so the abutters would be aware if they're listening to this or watching it um, when it's been postponed to I mean it gets to a point if it's been tabled so many times and we do we notify abutters. Right. for example I know with we talked about the same thing with the the gimber Right, we would re-notify that. that. Obviously, yes. because that's a date uncertain that we would need to take, uh, that would need to be re-noticed. Yes. So does that get to your... It, it does. I, I constantly am doing this because of zoning and planning being slightly different. But in zoning, even when, some, when somebody requests a continuance, the board actually has to grant the continuance. It it's, can't just be an administrative thing by the planning department. It has to be made by the board and continued by the board procedurally, not like somebody wants to stop it, just to make sure it's done correctly. And I didn't know if it was the same for us, and that's what I was asking. Yeah, so if, if we had accepted the case and, you know, for example, in, in, the, in the Manchester Street situation where we had accepted the case and actually heard it, and then, it, in tech, that was a little unusual because it was essentially the applicant saying we're waiving the requirement. But if we were actually continuing the case, if they said we, you know, like, then we would make a motion and say we're going to continue or we're going to table the case. But but in this case, because we haven't accepted the case at all, we're, we're not making any. Mo we wouldn't 
we wouldn't be in a position to make a motion on it. So typically what we would do is if a postponement is requested, we simply accept it. We don't we wouldn't make a motion on it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Other business case number one, review to tentative agenda to determine proposals of regional impact. Mr. Chairman, I looked at this and I didn't see anything that would have any regional impact. Okay. And just for um, Maggie's edification, so every meeting we get a list, it's usually in this form and it's often a mix of projects that are already, you know, sort of on the agenda and, and you know, past projects and, and new projects. But we look at that to determine there's, there's a process by which if we were to say, gee, there's, this project could have an impact on oh, a neighboring right. t municipality, mm -hmm. um, there's a process by which that other town can effectively have, they, they would be notified uh, okay. of the, the case. It's, it's a pretty rare occurrence. I think it's, I can't think of it, no, since I've been on the board, that's actually we've ever notified. I do recall one case where after the fact, another town said, we think you should have notified us. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty rare. Um, but in any event, so we, we just take a look at this. And so if, if you looked at this and saw, gee, this is, this is a significant project. It's, you know, right on the border with Hollis or Merrimack, Merrimack or something, you know. We think, we think they have the right to be notified of this, then we can consider that. But Mr. Kelly, having reviewed Thoroughly. the technical review uh, meeting projects, uh, has determined that there are no proposals of regional impact. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Mr. Pucci. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Discussion items? Mr. Weber. Um, things came up tonight, and I would ask staff, um, because a lot of these have, have impact, and, and I would wonder if it would be possible to get legal to come to our next meeting and to advise us in, is it legal for us to stop and why we could stop this, how, in the right way that, so that we, as a board, we don't get into trouble legally. Uh, as far as, like tonight we had, um, he came before us and he didn't have any answers. Uh, we just say, no, we don't want to do this. And then we have other ones that are ongoing, ongoing, and ongoing, without mentioning them. Um, how would we actually take that off and say, legally, just stop. We're not going to do it anymore. You did? Yeah, no, I'm just saying take certain ones that are going to be on here for, it seems like, forever. Well, I mean, you're talking about extension requests or things that are on extensions and just continuously on extensions uh, at some point in time they're going to come before the board or they're going to continue and continue and continue so that it doesn't happen next time we can't now we don't know that we can really take it off and so I just but I'm just trying to are, are you talking about Postpone, you know, requested postponements. Or are you talking about an extension request for an approved plan? Well, we have one here on ours that just is a continual postponement. And before we next time, before we have that come before us, reasons why we don't have to postpone it legally, or could we get into trouble saying no, you can't, we don't want to extend this. I just want to have some kind of, I don't know if I should just go and talk to legal about it. Yeah, I just, but I, again, I just want to distinguish between an extension request, which is an applicant coming before the board and asking for an extension of the approval that was previously granted, in which case we would absolutely have the discretion to say, no, we're, we're not approving your extension, versus an applicant who's, whose case is yet to be heard, who's requesting that we postpone 
hearing on the case. And I think the question there is, is really one Jerry was raising, which is, are we effectively notifying abutters if there's a, if there's a continual postponement? So I think we need to make sure we're doing that. Now, maybe that doesn't answer the question you have, but, but I do want to just distinguish between those two things, because I, I do think we have to treat them differently. What I think I'll do is I'll just talk to legal okay. on my own. Won't affect anybody. Because I, 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 sometimes we all want to just say, no, because there's no, se doesn't seem, you know, that they have a good reason for it. And I just want to make sure that we're protected. Okay. That's all. Uh, well, certainly we do have, I mean, we do have the opportunity if we wanted to, to have legal counsel here, and I think we could go into executive session, you know, I mean, I know we've, we've done that at least on one other occasion where I think we'd probably do it, you know, in advance of the meeting if, if, if we thought it was worthwhile. So if you, if you have a conversation with the Corporation Council and you think, gee, this is something that I think that the board should have a discussion um, about with council, then that's certainly something that we could, yeah, we I'll could arrange for. Okay, any other discussion items? No. Mr. Kelly? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Kelly to adjourn. Second by Mr. Rapucci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We're adjourned at 742.